We've got John here. How are you, John? I'm good, thank you. Good? Yeah. How was your flight over? Long, but it was it was <laughs> fine. Yeah? yeah. Well, what did you get? Do you have a look? What type of food do you have on here? What was the in-flight entertainment like? Um, can't remember. Was it beef? Uh, Airplane food is always horrible, isn't it? What do you What do you It was nice. Was alright? Yeah, it was alright. Who did you fly with? Uh, Thai. Yeah. That's um, yeah, I normally like flying with American Airlines. Yeah. Uh, stuff they have like good greasy food. <laughs> Everyone loves the greasy food. Yeah, no. And did you fly early in the morning or was it late at night? Or was no, we flew like 2 p.m. from Sweden and yeah. then arrived 8 p.m. Oh, that's not too bad. Day, no. And you sleep on the plane? Or you like me, you can't sleep on the plane at all? I slept uh, three or four hours um, on the second leg from Bangkok. Yeah. It wasn't too bad? No. This um, this night, well yeah. last night was not so good sleep wise for me. Yeah. Uh, when we got to Melbourne, I slept three hours. Jeez. Uh, it throws your time out of work as well, because you're probably on tour a lot as well, flying here to there, always yeah. going to different gigs, different events. And I just go to sleep when, when I'm sleeping and then it's fine. Yeah. Uh -huh. So tell us about some of your recent material. What sort of tracks? What's been in the in production recently? Um, well, tomorrow is uh, the release day for a track I did with uh, Benny Benassi. Yep. Uh, which is called Blink Again, which is a remake of my old track called Blink. Yep. Um, and then I have a track out on Nicky Romero's label, Protocol, mm -hmm. uh, which is called Fireflies. And then I have a track with Rick and Fiona in June. Yeah. And this is it's a few, it's like seven tracks. You got a fair bit coming up. Yeah, it's very busy. And what are you sort of like when you when you're producing music? Do you like to be all in your own sort of space, or do you like working with others? I like working with others um, online. Online, yeah. Yeah. So not in the same room where they're yeah. touching your stuff, you're touching their stuff. Yeah, no, I don't. <laughs> it work. I did that last time. I did that was uh, with Avicii, I think. Yeah. How that, that, was, that was fine. It's good. Yeah. You didn't you didn't go to reach over to your controls and say, "Now you gotta put this one in." No, that was <laughs> that was actually good. Yeah? yeah. And what track was that one that you worked on with Avicii? That one was called "Don't Toll Back." Yeah. Like, that was released two, three years ago. Wow. And I think that sort of stuff is still remains quite popular as well. I yeah. mean, people listen to that sort of music as well, and it gets remembered. And what sort of uh, touring schedule do you have now that you're in Australia? So tonight, I'm in. Geelong in Melbourne. Mm -hmm. uh, tomorrow I'm off. The next day, Brisbane. Yep. And then I think an island called Island of Sin. Right. Could be. And then I'm still yeah. in Sydney for a couple of days off. And then what are you going to be doing on your days off? Have you got anything planned? Yeah, we're going to the zoo. Sydney's always pretty good. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> I've been there before. Yeah? yeah. What was your favorite part? Uh, Kangaroos. Kangaroos. Everyone loves the kangaroos when they come here. I know, but it's no. nice because you think that they're like these nice, but they're awful. They're animals. awful. <laughs> they're mean animals. Yeah. yeah. Had, have you had a run in with a kangaroo any time? No, but I saw one kicking. Oh really? The kangaroo. Jeez. And that was in the in the zoo. Yeah. All right, well, look, you're, you're not walking around. See, a lot of people overseas they think we've got kangaroos in their backyard. They think oh, yeah. that we just ride kangaroos to school, ride to work. Yeah. They're in their production studio making music with us, I was but they're not. I was disappointed with the koalas because they were... I catch them in their one... No, in their 23-hour sleep schedule, yeah. so I didn't see You didn't get to see much of them. <laughs> That's a bit annoying. Yeah. But yeah, I'm sure there's a, they'll be definitely awake this time, I reckon. What do you... Probably, yeah. We'll have to make sure we get you in the, the time when they're awake, when they're the moving around. When they're, when they're awake too, you can't do anything. Like, And they're always eating um, the gum leaves. Yeah. And it's not, they're not really interesting either. They just sort of sit there. Yeah, but they are <laughs> cute. They are cute, yeah. And tell us also, with these new tracks coming out, how long does it take you to make a track? So It depends. Um, if I vibe from it good, it can be a few hours. Yeah. Um, otherwise, I do. What's normal today is that I do, you know, 20 versions of a track. And I really? I play it out and I want to change something. So you, would you consider yourself a perfectionist, where you've got to, you really want to get it perfect before you release it out? It turned into that. Uh, before, I didn't care that much. I, just, I did a track in two hours and then released it. Yeah. Now it's more. Yeah. You've got to. <laughs> you feel that that's the one. Yeah. Yeah. And that sort of takes you anywhere from, I guess, a week to, to months. 
do you sort of have tracks sitting on your computer that you still haven't released or you, you don't feel oh, yeah. right with? Yeah, I mean, I used to do um, a compilation for the Mix Mag. Mm -hmm. And um, I just decided to put like four unreleased tracks on there. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. So people had a bit to listen to on that one that hasn't yeah. come out yet? Yeah. Um, what was no, the it's out, it's out today. Oh, really? Because we saw on your SoundCloud you've got also some of the new tracks you got coming up in the compilation as well. Yeah. That was that was pretty good. I had to listen to that as well, and I think a lot of other people, about 15,000 or so, probably more other people. Yeah, we have to um, two of those are coming out. The rest are, we're, we're looking for what we can do with them. Yeah? And what does that involve when you look for what you can do with them? Is that for labels or is that for you want to mix well, it with some other music? Yeah. Like I've, did, I've done this uh, preview thing now for three years mm -hmm. and I sort of just compile what I've done. Yeah. Uh, like five or six tracks. And then, and then after a while you see like, okay, maybe this track wasn't working out that well. Yeah. Mm. And does that work really well for you? How do you find that? Is that? It's just, um, I think, to let people know what's going on. Yeah. So. Yeah. And what sort of software do you use when you when you make tracks? Because uh, I know we've interviewed a fair few DJs. Some use Ableton. Some use there's a couple, a couple of other ones I use as well. But I what use uh, Cubase called. Right. Okay. Um, so I've been using that for since I started actually. Oh really? I never switched. You just you like it that much? Yeah. Has it, has it improved over time? Yeah, like it's getting it um, easier, uh, I guess. But it's, I mean, I'm so used to it now, so I'm, I'm just, yeah, I know my shortcuts. Yeah, and you know what you want to do, you can start up. You, you just pretty much, you're very familiar with the program. Yeah. Yeah, and would you switch any time in the near future, do you think? Or would I, it have to I, be an amazing I, piece of software? I always have the temptation of trying something else, and then I, I check it out for like, <laughs> seconds and you go back from mine you, you get frustrated yeah it's, it's tough like I've seen it and I really don't know much about producing but when I see that they've got the different channels and they got the different like music they, they make it I'm thinking geez by the time you learn every single button what it does how it works together and then you get other tracks and you mix them together it, it must be crazy trying to learn a piece of software from scratch yeah it's like okay now I have to learn this program it's gonna take you know a couple of hours yeah and then you have to be creative Tough. Gosh. And do you, when you work with other artists who use different software, do they find it easy to, to use your software? How does that work? Well, then we usually send audio files back and forth. Right. Um, so something that's compatible with both. Yeah. And and you sort of decide that one of you has to complete it. Yeah. And who is the one that usually completes it when you're sending the audio files back and forth? Um. I completed a lot. Yeah. Um, yes, back and forth. I mean, sometimes I get stuck and I just don't know what to do, and then I just have to finish it. Yeah. And I guess, do you look for inspiration, or do you get other people to help you when you're producing your music? Do you have any mentors that you look you look at? Not really. Um, no. I mean, I finish something and then I try it out. Yeah. In the club environment. Yeah. And then See how the club. That everyone relates to it and see how they like it. Yeah, I mean, if it, there's no reaction in a club where it usually is reaction, then yeah. something's wrong with the track. Mm. And have you had any moments where there's been a reaction that you weren't expecting? Yeah, I mean, it's, um, yeah, I mean, I've had tracks that I thought would be some huge, <laughs> and they sound really bad, and that's always frustrating. But then I have tracks that I didn't think much of would sound great. Yeah. Some, yeah. Definitely happens, yeah. Yeah. And what do you? What would you give yeah. sort of upcoming DJs? Any inspiration? What would you tell them? Who's someone who's learning to DJ right now? What information would you say to them that might help them move along the DJ career they're aiming for? DJing isn't that hard. Uh, it's just the producing and making your own music that's difficult because yeah. the competition is so big right now. And you have to be original in what you're doing. And Mm. And do you find that it's hard to be original in what you're doing? Because there's a lot of music out there now and you, it's hard to find your taste? Or do you think you just, you just find what you like and you stick with it? It's harder when you um, constantly like your own beat port and you just think to everything. <laughs> because you get influenced and the best thing I mean, I just, when I'm in the, sometimes when I'm producing in a hotel room I just don't listen to house music. I can make a house track. Yeah. Doesn't sound like everything else. 
Yeah. And do you take your inspiration from different areas of music, different genres, or different people who make music? Uh, I used to before. When I when I started making music, I I sampled a bunch of like jazz tracks. And yeah. Did that, but now it's just playing around with different synths and see how it comes out. Yeah. Yeah. And when you were starting to DJ, when you learned, who did you look for for that inspiration? To be honest, uh, I. I didn't look for anything. I knew that I had to DJ yeah. because I was releasing music, and um, I was what 16 by the time. And Sweden, when I was 16, yeah. was not much happening. Really? So um, look, yeah, things have changed as well. I mean, yeah, I mean, I I've never been out in a club, and I I had to start DJing. Yeah. Um, so my my father told me one day, like my my. Uh, his friend's son mm. uh, had some sort of musical career going, yeah. and then he stopped. So he was like selling, a, selling off a bunch of equipment. Yeah. So I went there and I saw these um, vinyl players, Technics mm. 100. That everyone that was standard in DJing yeah. back then, and they were just standing there. I was like, <laughs> okay, well, can I buy these? I know you can just rent them for like you know, <laughs> how long you want. Yeah. So I got them and I practiced and uh, yeah, after a while I had my first gig and that stuff. And it just went from there. Yeah. And were your parents very, like, because I had a read that they, was, you had a big musical background as well in your family, is that right? Yeah. So tell us a bit about that. What was their involvement in music? So my, my dad was a drummer, or he is a drummer. Mm -hmm. uh, my mom is a singer. And my cousin is uh, he's a techno producer. Right. And my brother is a pop producer. Wow, it's a big range of different yeah. different genres and then as well. A bunch of like um, relatives working on different parts of music. Yeah. And do you think that, is there any reason that brought that along? I don't know. I mean, we always Sweden is good for music. Like we. Um, when you go to school, you have to, or I don't know now, but yeah. you had to learn uh, musical instruments. Yeah. And so I learned piano and guitar and drums. Yeah. And you know, Sweden is dark six months a year or more, mm. so you have to be creative somehow. And so it gets music. quite cold there as well, doesn't it? Yeah. So it, it's the, is the DJ sort of atmosphere, the nightclubbing, all of that, does that happen all year round? Or is that sort of seasonal? No, I mean, Right now, the, the 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 clubs in Stockholm is going on all year round. Mm. I guess it's probably a good thing for you, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I know a DJ in Stockholm anyway, but yes, yeah. uh, you know, it's good. For people that yeah, and where you, where would you like to DJ that you haven't already? Any particular clubs or any particular locations in the world that you you think you um, really want to get there? And not really, I don't I don't know. Um, I've never been to New Zealand. That's, <laughs> that's not too far away. No, I know. So while you're here, what do you uh, think? We'll just head over to New Zealand for the weekend? I get me a show, I'll, I'll do it. Done. Um, we'll, maybe come with me and we'll uh, do it together. You can teach me a few things yeah. about uh, some of the software that I have absolutely no idea about. I mean, <laughs> no, I mean, I, I think I've been in most places. Yeah. At this part. No, uh, South Africa. I've been to. South Africa would be interesting. Yeah. I think that'd be, it'd be really interesting to see how the crowd responds to the music. They just had their first... Uh, was it all shot? That was the South Africa. Was there? Yeah. Wow. Um, so that would have been interesting. I'd have to catch some footage of that and see what it was like, I think. Yeah. And we heard that you did play Tomorrowland uh, not too long ago. And we had, what was playing at Tomorrowland like? Because that's an absolutely huge crowd. Huge yeah, event. Tomorrowland's good. I did Tomorrowland uh, last year. Uh, Tomorrow World last year. Yep. Which was in the US. Yeah. Um, and that just launched last year, didn't it? Yeah, it was the first year. First year? Uh, yeah, it was good. Uh, a lot of people and good crowds. Is the crowd better here or over there? What do you think? I don't know, I haven't been here for a while. Um, but I remember Stereo Sonic when I was here for Stereo Sonic, that was good. Yeah? yeah. Were you were a fan of Stereo Sonic? Because I know that's one of the big events that we run here in Australia as well, yeah. along with a handful of others. And what was the crowd reaction to some of the music you were playing? It was really good. That was my first sort of festival tour. I yeah. Did. And um, was that the first time you were in Australia? Yeah. And what did you think of it back there? I thought it was great. Worth coming back, obviously. Yeah. Then I came back uh, a couple of years after for a club tour. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Are you going to come back again? Sure. No, never. I'm <laughs> After meeting me, no, he, no, he just hates it, doesn't he? We've got a question here from Stephen. He submitted a question. Um, when you are making a melody for a track, what do you use as inspiration? I don't know. I just try to play around in the studio and see what I can come up with melody-wise and mm -hmm. sound-wise. And if I do something that sounds creative and original, I, I continue on that pace. Yeah. If I do something that sounds like everything else, I just throw it away. Yeah. And he's also added as well, um, do you listen to certain music such as classical music or do you build songs around chords? I listen to all kind of music, uh, jazz, classical, um, yeah, everything. Um, and I, yeah, I build tracks around chords. Yeah. And I guess to, if, if Stephen over here was sort of learning to become a DJ, would, would you give him any uh, ideas about how he can go to build tracks? And what, what would be sort of the setup for someone like him who's trying well, to... It, it depends what sort of track you want to do. If you want to do a tech house track, so you, I think it's easier when you start with drums. Mm. You know. Some loops going. Yeah. But if you want to be more EDM, you know, you need, you need chords and melodies and you need other stuff. Yeah. And what's your favorite type of music to make? Do you enjoy one more than the other? No, like I I, I make everything. I, I collaborate with a few people on Tech House too for other artists. And I do yeah, what I do for myself and stuff. I, I don't know. I, <laughs> I like everything. I, I make listening music that I want. Yeah.